Welcome to Carnegie Meadows Farm. I'm Tecon Iron Axe, and tonight we're going to be making a lovely cheddar that's going to have a wee splash of whiskey, and then it's going to be bathed in whiskey. So we call this an Irish cheddar, and we're going to be using Jameson Irish whiskey, one of my dear friends and favorites. But we are going to sacrifice this little lamb, and we're going to use it to make cheese. Hope you enjoy the video. The cheese that we're going to be making tonight comes out of uh, two books. Uh, my cheddar recipe that I normally uh, make uh, that will be linked in one of these videos up here, down here, somewhere, wherever she does it. I don't really know. Um, it'll come out of this book and we make a, a standard cheddar. And then we're going to just kind of alter it a little bit with this book that has the Irish cheddar. We start our double boiler. The reason why we want to do a double boiler is so that we heat the curd and the milk gently and we have a nice even distribution of the heat so that we can use the conduction to raise the temperature of the curd and the milk very gently and not too fast. Once this is filled, you can take it to the stove. So this recipe calls for, again, 12 to 15 liters of milk. I'm using 12 liters on most of my recipes because that's the size of my stock pot. Again, we're using raw milk that we uh, milk from our cow. Should probably link a few other videos. We shake our jars as we add them to make sure that we get all the cream that has risen to the top. Like all the other cheeses that we make, um, we'll put it on a low heat. We'll put it on a low heat because um, we don't want to heat the milk too quickly. We'll come back when this is 86 Fahrenheit. Uh, so the one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we mix the uh, our milk, like you saw, we had uh, a cream line there, so we want to make sure that that cream is evenly distributed within the milk. So I'll stir this um, as we bring this up to temperature. Uh, we're sitting roughly at uh, 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit right now, so it'll probably take about half an hour before we bring this up to 86 when we can add our culture. We've reached 86 Fahrenheit, so we're going to turn our heat off remove our thermometer and we're going to add some MA4001. There's multiple different cultures that you can use uh, for cheddar or at least a few at, at any rate. I like MA4001. They give different flavors. I like the flavor of MA4001. You've got Meso2 that you can also use. So you want a quarter teaspoon of the culture and you want to spread it on the entire surface of the milk. You don't want to bunch it up in certain areas and we're going to let it hydrate or rehydrate sorry for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll stir it in. Following 10 minutes we're going to mix the culture into the milk with 20 up and down motions, stirs and then we're going to let this ripen for 45 minutes. The stirring ensures that the product is mixed throughout the entire milk. And of course, the lid goes on, keep the heat in there. Following the 45 minutes of ripening for the culture, uh, we're going to add a quarter cup of unchlorinated cool water. And what we will do is add calcium chloride. And we want three quarters of a teaspoon of calcium chloride. And we'll mix that around. Okay. So we'll mix our calcium chloride into the milk. 20 up and down motions. Make sure it's evenly mixed. I have sped this up for you to see, but do keep in mind it is slow and steady. Once that's all mixed in, set the timer for five minutes and we'll just let that sit. And at the same time, we'll get our uh, rennet ready because uh, that is what will be added next. So for the rennet, same idea. Cool, unchlorinated water. We want a quarter cup. And we'll mix our rennet and dilute it. 
So we're using uh, liquid rennet, 300 IMCUs, and we want three quarters of a teaspoon mixed in our quarter cup of water. Following five minutes, we'll add our rennet to our milk and we'll mix it in, same as our calcium chloride, 20 up and downs. Again, I've sped this up, but it is slow and steady for your 20 up and down strokes. At this point, we'll set our timer for 45 minutes, allow that milk to coagulate, and then we'll come back and check for a clean break. The following 45 minutes, we're going to check for a clean break. Which looks like we got a good clean break. So what we'll do now is cut the curd. So with our whisk, let's go around the outside and twist as we come up. Slowly and gently. Usually just follow the outside of the pot and move in a little bit. Get the stuff in the middle. Now we'll let that sit for five minutes. After five minutes of letting the curd rest, um, we're going to turn our heat on to low. And we're going to bring our temperature of our curd whey mixture up to 102 Fahrenheit. And we're going to do this again over 40 minutes. So we're sitting probably just shy of 86 Fahrenheit right now. A little cold here today in Canada. So it probably dropped a few degrees while it coagulated. The other thing we're going to do is as we're heating this mixture up, we will continue to stir our curd so that we stop it from matting. And as it gets warmer, it's going to expel a little bit more whey and the curds will decrease in size. Only periodically stir and do it gently. Right, so we've reached uh, 102 Fahrenheit. So we're going to turn our stove off. We're going to set our timer for 30 minutes. And what we're going to do here is just allow the curd to sit in the warm way and in our water bath. Um, and we're going to continue to um, stir the curd throughout so that it doesn't mat. So just same stirring. You can see the size of the curd now. It's shrunk considerably in size. Make sure you try to get all of those big pieces and make sure it's not matting. And again, try to keep this um, at about 102. You shouldn't need any residual heat um, throughout the 30 minutes. And then just continue to stir periodically throughout. Between periodically stirring, we're going to go ahead and get our cheesecloth line colander ready. We are going to line it with a kind of like plasticky cheesecloth. I find that these ones do really, really well. So we're using stainless steel clothespins and we're using those to help hold the cheesecloth up. Some people use a really big cheesecloth. It is not my preference to do that. I don't like to have to tuck all the tails in. So this is how I do it using these little clothespins. You can see that the curds are getting smaller and smaller as we're taking our time stirring. We're almost ready, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to pour hot water on our colander so that when we pour the curd in, it does not get shocked as well as help disinfect. You can see we're just pouring the curds in through the hot colander now, cleaning out this pot as best we can. Then we are going to move the colander into the empty pot just to lift it up to the sink. I hold the colander in the sink and then Thomas will pour one third of the way back into the pot. We will take this back over to the stove, put the lid on, and then we are going to turn the stove on to low. And what we're doing right now is called the cheddaring process and this is what gives you that classic squeak 
During the cheddaring process, we are going to flip the cheese every 20 minutes. The timer is set for one hour, so you'll be flipping the cheese a few times over the period of this hour. Once we are done flipping the cheese, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut it. Most times you will see cheese cut into long, thin pieces, kind of like french fries. I've even seen people use a french fry cutter. We have tried all different ways and we find that cutting them into small cubes, they press the best and they give us the best results. So after doing this many, many different ways, this is the way that we like. You may find another way that you prefer. This is just our preference. You can see I'm being very careful and making sure that they are all somewhat evenly cut in size. The next step in making this Irish whiskey cheddar is slightly different than what we would do normally. Normally we would salt this. In this particular instance, we are actually going to be adding a quarter cup of Irish whiskey. This better taste good. Um, not that I'm gonna eat it, but Jameson's mm -hmm. in cheese curds. Those of you that like Jameson's. Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey. Maybe you'll like cheese curds with Irish whiskey. Well, that smells magnificent. <laughs> you can see we've gone ahead and added our salt as usual at this point. It's usually for us a tablespoon and a half of our kosher salt that we're going to add to the cheese curds. And then we're going to go ahead and mix this all together by hand. This ensures that everything is coated in the salt and, of course, the Jameson's Irish whiskey. Try a piece. Well, squeaky. Does it have a flavor of whiskey at all yet? No, yeah. no. I think it just needs to brine in it. Still good though? Oh, yeah. After you've added your Irish whiskey and your salt, you've stirred it all around, you're going to add the cheese to the press and get ready to press it. I usually pour the last bit down into the press to try to utilize every bit of that Irish whiskey. Of course, you have to move quickly because it does come out the other end. We're gonna go ahead and press now. And in this first press, which will be an hour long in duration, we are going to press down until we hit fairly decent resistance and until we have a slow steady drift as seen here. You don't want it flowing out and you don't want it not flowing at all. So it's a fine line between how much to press and how much not to press, but you can see the dripping. Then after the hour is over, we're going to go ahead and do what's called a redress of the cheese. And that's just a fancy way of saying, flip it upside down and put the stuff back on it and press it down firmly. Now this one will be pressed for 12 to 16 hours. The next day, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to unmold this and you will see I'm making sure that I put all the pieces back in because we don't wanna lose them. So you'll see on the top of this cheese after I unmold it that there is some uneven edges and that does make it really, really hard later on and it's a great place to have mold grow so I just trim those off. That way I'm working with a very smooth top surface. What's the matter, Thomas? All right, Brian, your cheese. You wanted to do this, remember that. But do I? Do I really? <laughs> it's too late now, you're committed. I'm not committed. I could drink all of this tonight. But we made the cheese. I mean, you can feel free to drink it when the cheese is done hanging out in it. This is called Irish whiskey cheese and it's from an artisanal cheese book. And then it has to sit in the Irish whiskey. <laughs> Why can't I? The entire bottle. You didn't even get one drink of it. <laughs> 
cheese in a cellar with the Irish whiskey. And as you can see, it only goes to about halfway up the cheese. So what we've had to do is, of course, flip it halfway through. And you do this with regular cheese that goes in a brine as well. I got a little messy there. I did clean it up. So here we are. It's now sat in the brine for 24 hours. I'm going to go ahead, pull it out, and we're going to let it air dry on our shelf for about three days or until it's fully dry. Once fully dry, vacuum seal it, and then you can store it in your cheese cave or fridge. This is our cheese cave. The cheese hangs out in here for at least two months, being turned three times a week. We have many different kinds in here. Um, you can see herbs and spices in some of them, paprika, uh, regular ones, all sorts of different cheeses. And this is where they hang out until they're ready to be eaten. Thanks for hanging out with us on the farm and we will see you next time. Somebody's a little excited about having this cheese. This tastes like <coughs> I'm gonna cry. Good evening. Good evening. Is it an evening that is good? Or is it an evening that we shall be good on? Take two! I'm a Viking!